want to add a little clarity. We're going to be talking about the new A2L refrigerants, and sometimes when it needs to be matched with equipment that is not compatible with A2L refrigerants and what you need to do about that. So let's kind of dive into this. As, as we go through this, we're going to be talking about furnaces mostly, but I do want to say if you have an air handler, ultimately that just needs to match the outdoor unit. So if the outdoor unit is 410A, then you need to have an indoor unit that is 410A. If you have an outdoor unit that is an A2L refrigerant like R32 or 454B, then you need to have an indoor unit. They, they need to match. And if one or the other needs to be replaced, I would say in most situations, you're going to have to replace both. I know there's exceptions to every rule. There are situations, those situations where we've got furnaces with coils and evaporator coil, and then an outdoor unit, whether it's a heat pump or straight AC. And the main thing is just know that you're evaporator coil is going to have a sensor on there now, right? It has to be there to meet codes with the new A2L refrigerants. And that sensor is going to have to plug into something, right? So as we go through this, just know that, right? That sensor has to plug into something so that the indoor fan motor goes into mitigation mode, bringing fresh air through there if a refrigerant leak is sensed. And so ultimately, if you were to replace the entire system, so meaning furnace, evaporator coil and outdoor unit, and they are all R32 refrigerant, then you're good. That sensor will have somewhere to plug into on that furnace. If that sensor senses a refrigerant leak, it'll go into mitigation mode. No problem. I'll say this, make sure you're reading the instructions. I've spoken to a couple of contractors who were having issues only to find out that if they would have just read the instructions, they would not have been having the problem that they were having. So scenario one is entire system replacement. All of it is R32 refrigerant. All of it should be fine. Second scenario is if you're going to replace either the indoor case coil or the outdoor unit, they are going to have to match, right? I can't think of too many situations where that's not going to be true. In almost every situation, as far as I'm concerned, from what I've been seeing, the indoor and outdoor unit are going to have to match. So if you've got to replace that outdoor unit, we need to replace a coil. For example, if you are replacing that outdoor unit and installing an A2L refrigerant, an R32 outdoor unit, then we're going to want to have a coil that matches that so that that coil has that sensor, if that makes sense. But let's just say you did that. Let's say you replaced the outdoor unit, you replaced the indoor evaporator coil, but you did not replace the furnace. That sensor by code still has to have something to plug into. Daikin is one of the sponsors on our YouTube channel. They were the brand that we sold and they make Amanda and Goodman products. They have a product and they're calling it the Dragonfly Furnace Integration Kit. And I'll put a link to that product down in the description of this video. But essentially, that is going to give that sensor somewhere to plug into. And if you read the instructions, it will go through how to wire it in with the existing low voltage wiring with the furnace. So that way it does all the things it's supposed to do as far as bringing on that indoor fan motor. But that Dragonfly board will allow you to reuse that furnace. You'll be able to continue to use that furnace that was originally matched with a 410A system and now just have to replace the outdoor unit and the evaporator coil. Now, what if we did the opposite? What if we've got a furnace that let's say the heat exchanger is cracked or something else is wrong and we're going to replace that furnace, but we're not going to replace anything else just the furnace. We're going to keep the evaporator coil. We're going to keep the outdoor unit. They're both 410A refrigerant in this scenario, but we're going to buy a furnace that's going to be looking for a sensor. It's going to say, hey, where's my sensor? It needs to be plugged into me. And if it's not, then I'm going to go into an error code and possibly completely shut down a hard lockout. And in this scenario, if you simply read the instructions, a lot of these furnaces have the ability for you to disable the mitigation functionality. So it's right there in the instruction manual. You just, you're basically telling the furnace, I don't have a sensor to plug into you. I'm pairing you with a 410A outdoor unit, a 410A evaporator coil, and I don't have a sensor to plug into you. Now, please read the instructions. But the other thing is, please don't do anything that's not code. 
don't do that. Don't go into the furnace and say, I don't have a sensor when you are pairing it with an A2L system, or don't install a R32 outdoor and indoor coil, outdoor unit with evaporator coil, and then just simply not plug the sensor in because you don't have anything to plug it into and not install that Dragonfly board. I can see that happening and I can see the safety ramifications from someone doing that. Now, the cool thing about this Dragonfly board is it will also work with modular blowers, right? If you have one of those modular blowers where you have the coil mounted on top, you'll still be able to use it in situations like that as well. So hopefully that makes sense. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. I know some of this stuff is probably more complicated than it needs to be, but you know, at the end of the day, we wanna make sure we're doing things safely and up to code. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where we talk about how to size a filter grill the right way. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.